the wisdom of God. Even children have wisdom. That we know very well. Even a baby has some kind of wisdom. Baby can reject what you are trying to put in its mouth. Turns the mouth left, right, dodging that thing you are trying to force into his mouth. You may succeed in putting that into his mouth, but he shall have made a statement that he does not like that thing based on his own wisdom. So everyone is wise. I mean, everyone has wisdom, but not everybody is wise. Even when you see those who are wise, the Bible says, <laughs> if you claim to be wise, then show it. So we need God's wisdom. Let's go again to 1 Corinthians 2. Quickly, we have a lot to share today. 1 Corinthians 2. We are we've been trying to relate this to our daily life. Looking at some Bible characters. Praise God. We looked at Zacchaeus the other time. In Luke chapter 19. We will not go there because we already dealt with that. He heard that Jesus was coming that way. And the Bible says, knowing he was of a small stature, he ran ahead of everybody and climbed a tree. He climbed a tree knowing that it was too small to be able to go through the crowd. Too small to go through the crowd. So he ran ahead. Don't forget, he was a rich man and highly influential. And we're able to see that the wisdom of the rich would not ordinarily have allowed him to run that way. The rich ideally would be too big to run like small boys. So we are, we're trying to say something that for you to really, really accept God's wisdom, you have to humble yourself. Because you, the wisdom you already carry, that I carry, that we have, is such that we believe we don't need God's wisdom. Because don't forget, it's still wisdom you have. It is still wisdom everybody has. But not everybody has God's wisdom. So we are told that the other wisdom will come to nothing. I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or excellence of wisdom. Now, this is the wisdom of men Paul was referring to. That's what you will hear in motivational speakings. It's about wisdom of men. He, didn't, he hadn't come to them in excellence of human wisdom, declaring to them the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. This is very, very apt and powerful. Look at that. Persuasive words of human wisdom. And that's what you see today in, most, in many, many sermons today. It is persuasive words of human wisdom. That's not the way God's word permeates people's hearts. That's not the way the, the, the gospel of Christ will penetrate people's hearts. It does not enter into the hearts of men through human wisdom. It doesn't happen. Because you don't want them to be angry. You, 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 are, you are trying to present it in a way that nobody will get angry. That's not the word of God. God's word such that if it must bless you, it has to first provoke you. If God's word must bless you, it has to break you to pieces. If God's word must change your life for the better, it means it has to break you down, demolish you, demolish your pride. If you cannot demolish your pride, that word can never bless you. So, if anyone preaches that same word that has the capacity to lift you up, bless you beyond measure, if that word is communicated to you, in persuasive words of human wisdom, that message will never bless you. But that's what you like to hear. That's what we all like to listen to. That which is not offending in any way. It's just well packaged. 
highly beautifully encapsulated such that nobody gets angry. That's what you see today. So he said, I haven't come to you with persuasive words of human wisdom. The other day, you know, in the U.S., I, 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 I cancelled somebody. Who, uh, he came, she came for counseling, and she said this and that and that and that. Mm. That she has spent many, many years, decades in the U.S. Now she was under pressure. She wanted to stay back there because she had, I mean, lived her youth in that place. All her youth, as it were. Now, she didn't want to leave that place, yet the law would have her come back to Nigeria. So she needed God's counsel according to her. So I needed to speak, but she wanted to hear what she wanted to hear. Are you getting me? All she was trying to hear was that God was saying she should stay on. Now, a wonderful woman that I respect a lot, so this is not to put her down, is that we all have this challenge. All of us do. Every one of us do, or rather does. We don't, I mean, we all do have this challenge. Everyone does have it. As she landed, and I said, hey, ma, what I'm hearing from the Lord is that you will be deported to Nigeria. Eh? She said, no, no, pastor, no, let God show me mercy. I said, that's the mercy of God. Ah, that cannot be, that cannot be. Ah, pastor, help me. I said, no, if you came to hear the wisdom of God, I have just told you. But if you came to hear my own wisdom, I would have said, oh, you will stay here. <laughs> and you will have given me so much money to thank me for the words I have spoken. I will have deceived you. No. Well, we left you there. I told her you will be back in Nigeria. That is where God's mercy will meet you. That's God's wisdom that will bless you. Ah, it is, you know, what he want God to do for you, he will do for you in Nigeria. Well, later, eventually she was in Nigeria. What did she tell me? She said, she didn't, she, she now said, sir, I didn't accept what you said that day in America. She said, after you had told me that painful thing, some other prophets told me, all they saw was that I was still in, in America, flourishing there, doing well. And I said, uh -huh. these are the ones that know the mind of God. She was telling me all that. She said, but after all the prophecies, which she was already enjoying, by the time the immigration people arrived to pick her up, and they picked her up, detained her for some time, she said, when they put her on the plane, coming back to Nigeria, she said, sir, I remembered you, that you told me this thing, which I refused to accept. So you see, the persuasive words of human wisdom, which those prophets used on her, got her very happy, and she got angry with me. At the end of the day, that wisdom of God, which she didn't want to listen to, if she had listened and accepted it, she will have had enough time to pack her things, to ship, I mean, bring her things back. She had built so much. Ah, she had flourished in that place. Cars, building, and all that. Very, very powerful things. On the day she was on the plane, she said only one briefcase she was allowed to pick that could contain three, three skirts and blouses or so. Just one small thing. After decades in America, so, we all have that challenge, including myself. Only knowledge that I'm sharing now can break it off our lives. Knowledge of these deep things I'm sharing. See, it will bless you to be attentive. We all have this challenge. Persuasive words of human wisdom. That's all we want to hear. We hate any other thing. We want to be told what we like to hear. No, we are not meant to hear what we love to hear, we are meant to be told what we ought to be told. So God's own word is God's own wisdom. God's wisdom is not human wisdom. God's wisdom may not be what you would easily accept. We all fight it. 
we struggle with it. We fight those who tell us what God is saying. Another person came to me in this Lagos. I said, ah, what are you doing? You're meant to be in America. Ah, he said, sir, I went. Many years back, he said, sir, I came to you to say I was going to the, to the U.S. And you told me bluntly, it was not your time to travel to the U.S. He said, when you said that, that was in Nevada. He said, when you said that to me, he said, that I hated you, I fought you. And I said, well, I saw it all. He said, I have abused you. I said everything against each. He told me that in Lagos here, some three, four years ago. This was about 18, 20 something years back. I was in Nevada then. He said, sir, he said, once he, as he got to the U.S. and things were happening, <laughs> it was like the pastor that was telling me not yet time to be in the U.S. Shortly, he said he found himself in prison. Ah, he was in prison and he was there for a long time. As he served his term, he just put him on the plane back to Nigeria. He said, sir, and I remember what he told me. Ah, I said, I should have listened to this pastor. Well, I don't want to go into all that he told me. He said he had lost everything. So the human, wisdom of God is tough on those who want to hear what is sweet. But there's no other wisdom. You will see it now. So at my speech, so it's not all about preaching. Even what you will tell people. If we would tell people the right counsel in our utterances, people would not be destroyed. But we all want to hear sweet things. We tell people what they want to hear. We want to be popular. We want their love offerings to come. We want them to be remembering, oh, you, you are the only friend I have in the church. Excuse me. The advice you give the person, is it the counsel of God or your own opinion? Do you know how many will have been in church doing well if someone at some point in time gave them the counsel of God? It is us that will tell someone, uh -uh, why were you not given what others were given? Uh -uh. It is the same people in church that will begin to insinuate what is not. Uh -uh. We thought you have done more than that person. Why were you not ordained a deacon? Uh, that person met you in church is the same people who don't know the counsel of God. So my speech or my counsel, my advice, my suggestion, my contribution in group meetings, etc. And if I have to preach, even my preaching, none came with persuasive words of human wisdom. This is the, it's a daily affair, it's a daily challenge. Everyone struggles here. People give their suggestions and tell you this is the truth. That's not the, that's your opinion. It's not the truth. That's your persuasion. The counsel of God is only one. Hallelujah. But in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Go on, please. So that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. Here we go again. He said, my speech, my preaching hadn't come to you in persuasive words of human wisdom. So that after listening to me, because faith comes by hearing, after you shall have heard me, your faith that will have come will not be resting, will not be in the wisdom of men. Oh my God. But that faith you now have would be in the power of God. This is the missing link today. Somebody told me, ah, Pastor Muiwa, I came to your church once and I thought you will, you, will, you will call me out and pray for me as I'm always prayed for. In, in, she mentioned the church, I won't mention that name. Ah, that place, when I go, they will call me out and pray for me. And I asked her, are you better now? She was looking at me. I said, I'm sorry, are you better now? And I referred to three cases about her. I said, this case about you, that matter, that matter, are they sorted out? Because that's what you like to be, to, to be given. Being called out and prayed for does not change anything. But that's what you want. That's the wisdom of men that people like. So they will call me out and pray for all my children one after the other. I said, because of the dollars you put on ground. 
because you would, at the end of the day, put so much in the pastor's post or account. That wouldn't have changed anything. Are you better now, man? Show me how better you are. Because you don't know the word of God. But you are enjoying being prayed for. So people would troop to that place where they are being prayed for. Meanwhile, these prayers, of what substance? What is the content in the prayers? It's useless. These prayers are devoid of God's word. They are filled with human wisdom. I was in a church in America there, and a guest speaker was there. I was seated there. I was also a speaker, but he was ahead of me to speak. And he began to, in America, he said, if you don't know it, it doesn't matter where you go to, you still will not know it. God's word has nothing to do with the location. This man of God, I'm not here to put him down, please. I, I, I'm not better than he is. I'm just by grace standing today. So I don't make, and I don't boast, I don't brag about it, but it's good I educate you. He started saying, in America, he said, the spirit of cockroach is warning some people. The cockroach spirit. And I asked myself, and he began to raise prayer around cockroach spirit. I said, what? I said, okay, okay. Ignorance has no respect for location. So people can still be dull in America. And people were receiving the message. What does cockroach spirit mean? What, what does it mean? It's just manipulation. It's not in the Bible. But people like to hear that, hey, you will have been better than this. There's somebody in your family that doesn't like you. That's, 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 that's gutter language. There's no place where there are no demons. There is witchcraft in London. Are you aware? Witches are in London. Wizards are in London. Demons operate in London too. Oh, I'm relocating. Oh, they are waiting for you there too. Relocate there. Because that's to the, to the wisdom today. They are relocating. <laughs> Reliance of you want to, many of you want to relocate. Don't dislocate, please. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Aha. It says it's not for the babes. It's for those who are mature. Those who will not be seeing the moon when their parents are looking for school fees to pay. I see the moon. Daddy, the moon sees me. God bless the moon. God bless daddy. E -b -b -p 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 -p. <laughs> it's among those who are mature, not among, among the, the toddlers. God's wisdom is not for babies. Babies want the sweet things. God's wisdom is not sweet, brethren, but it is God's wisdom. It's never sweet. That's why you don't find babies embracing it. But is it hard? No. It's hard to those who are not humble enough to accept. Let's go on. We speak wisdom. This is God's wisdom. Among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. Oh, so this age has its own wisdom. Not that of the rulers of this age. So there's wisdom of this age. There's the wisdom of the rulers of this age. What does that tell you? There's the governor's wisdom. President's wisdom. That's why somebody can appoint very strategic people all from his own village. That's wisdom. The person is demonstrating. It's the wisdom of man. Because he's afraid of others who are not from his own enclave. It's all there in democracy. That's why democracy is human wisdom. It has never helped any country. Not anywhere has democracy helped the nation. Because it's all about men. It's about human wisdom. And they know it's a game of numbers. People now know how to get the numbers. And they win elections when they are fake people. If you can get the numbers, you win. Is it not true? But when, and it's always, it's, it's secret ballot. Oh, those who are thumb, doing thumbprints for this candidate, what has happened to their minds? Have they been bought over? Say, leave that to one. One man, one vote. Now, the man that voted, what led to his voting for this candidate? If he was bought over, his conscience had been bought over, he said, no, leave that one. That's his own judgment. That's why democracy is entirely human wisdom. It cannot save any nation. But it's the best form. It's the best 
form of government out of all the evil forms of government. This is the best one. No nation, not even America, that so-called grandpa of democracy has got it right. They cannot get it because it's about the numbers. The popular person may never win. Because somebody knows how to get the numbers to manipulate people and they land up behind him and throw it for him. What will you do? Say, ah, ah, ah. You people, ah, ah. You, did you, ah, we voted for you. Well, how did he emerge? Well, he has the numbers. Simple. Now, look at this. We do not speak wisdom among those who are not mature. But it's among those who are mature, not that of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, all of these wisdoms are what? Coming to nothing. That's why I get scared. We all have wisdom, but the wisdom we have will still come to nothing. It will still be useless. And that one says, this wisdom is useless. Any wisdom outside God's wisdom will still amount to uselessness. So this is key. It says every other wisdom will still come to nothing. And I told you before that there are forms of wisdom. Wisdom, academic wisdom. When a professor is talking, you know, you believe that he's so wise that he cannot be, he cannot be faulty. Are we together? He's a prof. Maybe of master official surgery, professor of you know, orthodontics. He says, hmm, hmm, because you don't know what he knows. So he is naturally a wise, the wisest person around. That's why he's on, at the professorial level. Is talking professorially. There's aesthetic wisdom, wisdom of the beauty queens. You know what I'm talking about? When the beauty queen enters here, you, you, she doesn't work that way. It's never going to happen. I, I, can you say I'm, I'm not trying to disparage anybody here? She will never work that way because she's been trained to, to cut to work. She has to come in, you know. She, she does that. Everything is in place. And she knows those who can never be her friends. She's too wise to make a dull lady her own friend. That's aesthetic wisdom. Are we together? There's marital wisdom. Don't marry from any other state. Hmm. If you do, I will disown you. Now that you are going to that place, hmm. don't kill me. You this my daughter. Don't go there. That, and we have brought that customary wisdom into the gospel. Yet we are born again. We will never entertain any person outside our own conclave or enclave. Tell somebody, that's your wisdom. It's ethnic or ethnocentric wisdom. Yes. It's empty jingoism. It's useless. It will come to nothing. People have killed themselves who marry from the same clan. Yes or no? Tell someone you need God's wisdom. Quit your own wisdom. So it is coming to nothing if it's not God's wisdom. It will still become useless. Now, after all the investments of life, money, time, in him, which we all are tempted to pursue, it still becomes useless. All right. Don't forget, as a reminder, 234 Proverbs says, labor not to be rich. Seize from your own wisdom. Isn't that instructive? 234 Proverbs. Isn't that instructive? It says, seize from your own wisdom. Look at this. No, give me King James here. Look at it. King James, please. Oh. All right. It says, seize from your own wisdom. That tells you, look at it. Isn't this instructive? This is key. If you don't understand the A part, labor not to be rich, the B part is, is quite succinct. It says, seize from your own wisdom. And that one says, be not wise in your own eyes. Now, somebody who has an MBA, for instance, and she has an MBA, she's too wise to marry somebody who has an ND. Are we together? I mean, the gap is already so wide. But God could orchestrate that home, bringing an ND holder and an MBA holder together in marriage. That doesn't make sense. Is that commonsensical? No. God's wisdom is never acceptable. 
to the glitterati, to the bright and beautiful. They are too polished to accept God's wisdom. That's why it says, seize from your own wisdom. Seize from it. James 3. That's why I refer to Zacchaeus again. Why would a rich man called Zacchaeus run like an area boy? He was rich and influential. He ran ahead because he heard that the Lord Jesus was coming that way. He abandoned his, his rich man's wisdom and ran like an area boy, climbed the tree. That bothers me a lot. If he ran, he could have run in a majestic, in a gorgeous manner. You know what I mean? He, he could have run you know, in a wealthy way. You know? <laughs> when the wealthy run, it's a different ballgame. You know, but when the when the poor run, they, they, they <laughs> so he ran and climbed the tree. All for what? To see a fellow man. Excuse me. Bible says he was rich. He was a man of terrific influence. He only heard that Jesus was coming. He didn't need healing from Jesus. He needed no cash from him. He didn't need any anointing, anointing for wealth. He needed nothing. No record that he was desirous of, desirous of getting some from the Lord. He just wanted to see how Jesus looked. What a man. And he ran ahead of everybody, knowing that he was a, a man of my stature. You know, in, 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 you know we, we have a group of short people. <laughs> and, you know, the, day, the day I saw that I was taller than my wife, I said, ah, I'm taller than you, can that happen? So that was the shortest person in the world. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, and I wanted a tall lady to marry tall, somebody taller than me. I said, well, praise the Lord. If I'm taller than somebody, it's a miracle. Hallelujah. I mean, she's the shortest person in her family today. <laughs> Do regards to you. <laughs> and it's, I see I have, I have an edge in my first. <laughs> Ooh, thank you. Love you. Praise the Lord. So, what are we talking about? God's wisdom is what we need. James 3. Okay, go to verse 10. This is a whole chapter, but we can't go there because of our time. 10, 11. All right. Out of the same mouth, it's talking about your mouth. Don't let blessings and curses flow from the same mouth. It says it's, 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 it's unthinkable. It's not God's wisdom that you are quick to curse people. It says, out of the same mouth, proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be so. God's wisdom does not permit you to curse as if a tap is flowing or running. If you if you do if you correct an Okada rider or a Kenape rider, he curses you immediately. That's the wisdom he carries. So please, a on everybody. Now, go on. Spring water, fresh water, and salty one don't come from the same source. This is wisdom of God speaking. This is God's wisdom speaking to me and you. Can a fig tree, my brethren, be olives? A grapevine be a fig? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. The two don't flow from the same fountain or the same source. That's amazing. This is God's wisdom. It's containing his word. And it's strong and fresh. Now look at this. Amazing. Who is wise and understanding among you? <laughs> Don't forget, all of us have wisdom. But not all of us are wise. That's why he's asking. Who is wise? <laughs> if you claim to be wise, he says, we'll soon test it. How? It says, let that wise and understanding person show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So that tells you wisdom is such that it has its characteristics. Meekness characterizes wisdom as a rule. Anyone that carries God's wisdom is very, very calm in his approach to things. Mm. As the Bible says, God's wisdom says, 
be quick to hear, but reserved in responding. Be slow to speak. That's God's wisdom. Mm. Oh my God. I'm trying to let you see. Just look at this God's mirror. Put it before your face and examine yourself as I'm doing for myself too. When we are under some provocation and all that, especially unprovoked attack, rather than listen to learn something, we are pre preparing what you will say and if I will cut into that person's speech and rubbish that which we might have learned something from because of the wisdom of man. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Now, next one, please. I am wondering why there's a serious challenge. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast. So he's talking about you being wise. If you say you are wise, he says, show it. As we see the way you conduct yourself in politics, in the marketplace, when we watch you in your school where you lecture, we will look at you in church. In church, we have this Sunday package. Everybody is holy and righteous and powerful. <laughs> Even though, you know, it's like we are a kind of gunpowder. If anyone should step on your ship, say, ah, are you blind? Are you blind? And you are wondering, have we ever fought before? This was just a mistake. A mistake. Mistake my foot. Nonsense. What kind of church is this? People are so, so, these are ragamuffins here. I would rather go to a very decent church. We are up the mobile people are. Can I, can I have an amen, somebody there? Hello. <laughs> so you find people, don't, don't blame the person. That's a wise fellow. By his or her definition. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, just do not boast and lie against the truth. Where is he going here? Go on, please. This wisdom does not descend from above. Oh, as I told you before, so envy is wisdom. But it says, it is that which does not descend from above. Oh my God. So self-seeking is wisdom. Every negativity is some kind of wisdom. Stealing, as I've told you before, is wisdom. Embezzlement is one of the best wisdoms ever. You secure your today and your the future of your children and your children's children and your children's grandchildren secure the future till year 30, 40. That's wisdom. Is it not true? That's why Abacha could steal so much. Sorry for mentioning names here. And that's the one we caught. Also, what are leaders that we cannot touch as we speak? The question will be, of what use? But don't blame them. They are being wise. <laughs> they are wise people. Praise the Lord. This wisdom does not descend from above. A kidnapper is a wise person. In his wisdom, once he kidnaps somebody who is known to a rich person, that's so ransom is sure. Five, at least five million. Yeah, yeah what are you talking about? You build his house in the village. It's just one business. It's okay. One operation is fine. Okay, so let's, let's go blow up that bank with dynamite. Now, so you the fear. Wise up, oh, be wise. Friend, be wise. This is reparation they are doing. The white people colonize us. We must scam them. We must shh. So they say, we are, we are not Yahoo boys, so we are boys Yahoo. And they are happy about it. They believe they are doing the best thing ever. They believe they are the wisest persons. And they say, hey, I hit him. He has entered the trap. These are wise men, by their definition. But are we better than they are? Are we really better? So if this wisdom does not 
descend from above, and it is described as earthly, sensual, and demonic. Oh my God. You mean there is some demonic wisdom? So you mean a governor can apply demonic wisdom, but you will never accept that. So we all are tempted here. Don't castigate anybody. All of us, unless and until we grow up in God's world, we will still be carrying on using our naturally given human wisdom. Can I go on? Now let's look at some other characters. You recall the moment when David had killed the Philistine, Goliath. You recall the story? What did women do? They began to sing. First Samuel 18. Let's quickly go there. Let's see wisdoms here, as it were, so that we can bring them to our contemporary level. The reason for all this, not to castigate them or rubbish them, is to learn from the Bible says, Romans 15, Romans 15 4, that all the things that were written before this time were of, were of our learning, that we may, through the patience and the comfort of scriptures, have hope. See, these things are for our learning. We are not meant to, to insult people like this who had no access to the word of God. Are you getting me? We are better pleased than they were. Praise the Lord. So when we refer to this, we do respect to them. Even people in our own time, we are not here to rubbish anybody's that. We also are not better than they are or they were. But we can get better. Amen? We will get better in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So look at this. From verse 6, because of our time. He had killed Goliath. What no man in Israel could do. Now, it happens also when you've done so much for your organization. You've been there for your spouse. You've put in everything for your spouse to rise to this very present level. And now, you, you are the target. You've done so much for your leader. He gets all the accolades. But here you are, being hunted by the, soul, the same person you've labored for. It happens. It happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul. That bothers me. They were dancing in their innocence. Something no man could do, a young boy had done, and they were, you know, it was a plus to the king. Yes or no? Under his watch, what couldn't be done was done. See, it was still a credit to the king. And they were going to the king. Yeah, whatever I'm going to sing now. Okay? Women, thank God for you. They went to meet, with the king, to meet the king, dancing and singing, dancing and singing. Oh, oh, David. And what were they singing? Ah. Okay. Somebody sang it someday. Oh, Tisheo, Baba Tisheo. You must have been there on that day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, and that's all to show, you know. We give all the glory to Jesus. Was that, was that criminal? No. It means your testimony may anger someone that was the spirit of Saul. Oh, my God. Even when you don't want anyone to know, it's just you and your family that know it, it will still filter out. And someone will say, why did she get that thing? Why not me? And you come to church following day, you're already having an enemy. She won't even greet me. If she greets, I will not answer her. Nonsense. Because her shoes are... are oh, okay. It's her Ceruti shoes. It's bought from Harrods. No wonder. The husband has bought it for her. Nonsense. And every praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's the spirit of soul. Testimonies are good. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if God has done it for A, it becomes a prophecy for B. That if God could do it for A, he can do it for me too, as B. So it is a prophecy for those who are expecting God to. To do likewise for them. But it becomes some acidic arrangement to the person who has a wrong spirit. 
who has negative demonic wisdom. Strife is wisdom. Envy is wisdom, but it is demonic. Look, let's look at it. They danced and said, Saul has slain his, his thousands, and David has slain his ten thousands. Was that a fact? Was that a fact? How many did David actually kill? Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. Here we go. <laughs> uh -uh, sorry? No, they said David had killed his ten thousands. How many people did David actually kill? Now, the, after killing Goliath, they began to slaughter the Philistines. Fine. But how many did David kill? How many did the women say he killed? Not, eh, not 10,000, but 10,000. All right. We are, we, are, we are going somewhere. You are, you are adding to that now. David killed Goliath. Look at this. Go back to verse 6. Let's go to verse 6. Look at it. When David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine, no S, not of the Philistines. So he had only killed one person directly, but indirectly he had killed thousands because there was a mass slaughter. But he had only killed one person, one Philistine out of the many thousands. Are we together? Do you agree with me? So if he had killed only one person who was their champion, how did the women arrive at that figure? <laughs> women, you are blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh -uh. My women are special. Unado. Meanwhile, they said Saul had slain his thousands. Did he slay anybody? We are, we are still there. Did Saul kill anybody? But they actually gave him so he said he had slain his thousands. So why wasn't that enough for Saul? He killed nobody. But they said they had killed his thousands. So how did this woman get the figure? We must examine the woman or investigate them. Praise the Lord. You know, women can, be, can go into hyperbole. Women can always go beyond the normal. It's like, like Hooke's law of elasticity. You know, once it goes beyond, beyond the elastic limit, it can't go back there, you know. <laughs> it's your wisdom. <laughs> Feminine wisdom, and that's very powerful. You know how to, to talk your husband into doing what he doesn't want to do normally. That's what you are. So, come on, come on clap for women, my God. Ha! Hallelujah. That's why, okay, let's, let's leave that. You have said that's your wisdom, and I'm okay with that. Now, Okay, so Saul was given some credit. He had sent his thousands. That was enough for Saul. And David said they put ten into his own. Then the next verse. Let's see. Then Saul was very angry. This anger was simply his own wisdom. He was not just angry, but very angry. Why? And the saying displeased him, and he said, he was only in his soliloquy here. He was not talking, he was talking to himself. He said to himself, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me, they have ascribed only thousands. Look at what he said next. Let's all read. Want to go? Read everybody. Had David ever laid claim to the to the kingdom? Saul went ahead of David to preempt what he was never thinking about. This is wisdom of man. That's why it's called demonic. We all have this challenge of misunderstanding people's intentions. Rather than ask, he didn't ask David whether he put the songs in the mouth of the woman. He, believes, he believed that David was the stage manager. He was just grandstanding. He was thinking too. David never, ever at any point, not on record that he desired to be the king of Israel. It was God that chose him. Are we together? Then the king said, it is the kingdom you will take next. That is his conclusion. He must have been crying for this accolade. 
Now it has been given, and I will also show him that Jesus didn't come from Ogun State. So Saul eyed David from that day forward. The Lord will deliver you from your enemies' hands. In the name of Jesus. If, now, listen, this was a man that risked his life. Even this same king, before this time, when it was told, it was mentioned to Saul that a young man was trying to risk his life by facing the Goliath, I mean the Philistine called Goliath. This same king sent for him, he said, you are a small boy. But he, Goliath, has been a man of war since his youth. While he was your own age, he was already a man. Not just that, uh, but also a man of war. So, you cannot face that. You are still a boy. He has been a man since your age. He's been a man of war. Every man is afraid of him. Why would you die before your time? There's a better way to commit suicide. So, I thought King Saul should have been magnanimous here. To say, look, even if they are singing his praise, it's okay. Ah, the worst thing is when the person or the place where you have labored, you are now being castigated as if you don't evil. But what do you do? There is still God's wisdom to handle that situation. Okay? When you are now being derided over excellence, you can still and you should still apply God's wisdom. If you respond based on your wisdom, you are not any better. Let's go on. So he eyed David from that day onward. Right. That's wisdom. From, okay, look at the next one. If you already know the story. On the next day, the very next day, look at it. The distressing spirit that the Lord God allowed came upon Saul. Ah. How this spirit did not come until he had envied David. So when you go into envy, you invite unclean demons into your life. They come in. The gate is open. The moment you go into strife or some contention with somebody, I will show her that leather is not pomo. Pomo and leather are not the same. She will get to know the stuff I'm made of. You also may not, you may not recover from that one. You may not recover from it. Strife is always going to consume everybody inside it. No one survives strife. It's a consuming conflagration. It destroys every person that toys with it. All right. And he prophesied. <laughs> He was speaking upon Saul. He began to prophesy. David played music with his hand some other times, but there was a spear in Saul's hand. Next verse, and we'll stop there for now. And Saul cast the spear or javelin, for he said, I will pain David to the world. Don't forget, I told you that your thoughts control your actions. He had thought to, him, to himself. He said, I will pain him to the world. That was his thought. He only acted on it. What is your thought? Take care of your thought now before it takes care of you. Deal with it or it will deal with you. All actions follow a thought. Every person on earth, whether they know it or not, go after their own thoughts. I told you the other day, be it Holy Spirit of God or Spirit of the devil, none of the two spirits can lead you by force. The Holy Ghost leads you as you allow him in your thinking. And the devil leads anybody who allows him in their thinking. Sometimes force says, the wicked person is wicked because there is no God in his thoughts. So wickedness, as you've been told already, is a definition that the Bible calls or describes as the thinking that has no God in it. So it's not the act, 
but the thought that is called wickedness. So there could be wicked people in church who are speaking, even as pastors. Once you think what is wrong, us not in line with God's word, you are, you are harboring wickedness at that point in time. I don't have money. That means that's wickedness. Let's see what Laban did. Laban and David. You remember the story? You remember? David had wanted to, I mean, Jacob, thank you. Jacob was to marry who? Rachel, you've forgotten. And he had served for how many years? Seven. To marry one beautiful lady. Ladies, see how powerful you are again. My God. He said, I will serve you for seven years to marry your daughter. But Laban shocked him. Let's see Genesis 29. Genesis 29, verse 16. We want to apply this to our daily life. 29, 16, Genesis. Now, Laban had two daughters. One was Leah. That was the older one. The younger was Rachel. Sibling reverie here. See wisdom on display here. Leah's eyes were delicate. She was beautiful. But Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Leah's eyes were, were, were tender. You know, voluptuous eyes. Very powerful eyes. But not as beautiful as the younger one was. Now look at it. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you seven years. I don't know where seven years came from. You see, when you are emotional about something you like, you might be wrong. Why seven years? Why not one year? Why will a man, because of love, say, ah, my woman. Ah, my woman. Okay, that's, that's what he said there. <laughs> so I was his, his woman. He said, seven years for my woman. At the end of the day, he was not a wise man. Why would he bring seven years of his life? Because of what he liked. Now, can we learn from that one? Oh, oh my gosh! Oh! Seven years. Ah, Laban looked at him. As soon as, as his bricks are filled. <laughs> I don't know where he got seven years from. He said, I will serve you seven years for reaching your daughter. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mind what you decide to do because of a momentary attraction. Next one, quickly. And Laban said, it's better that I give her to you and under wisdom. You can see wisdom here. The all demonic. His wisdom told him seven years of servitude or slavery. Now, it's okay to do whatever good and legitimate to marry somebody. Women are that powerful. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, let's leave it. <laughs> you know. That, that, that I should give her to another man. Now, my question would be, why must, how was it better to give Jacob and not another man? What was another man's crime? That's for another day, maybe for evening service. I'm trying to show you how we all fall flat here because of our human wisdom. Let's go on. So Jacob served, and they seemed only as a few days to him. Because of the love he had for her. That's not wrong for loving somebody. But how far, far was that going to take him? Next verse. <laughs> so Jacob said to Laban, seven years, it seemed like a few days to Jacob. That's what love can do. Praise the Lord. When I was cutting this beautiful girl, I would always go to their house. <laughs> I was always there. As if I, was, I had nothing else to do. Always there to look at her. So that nobody would go around. <laughs> if, 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 if another man had I tried to take her, what power did I have to stop the man? I had nothing other than an incomplete Bible. That was my asset. Thank you for marrying me. All right. Give my wife for my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. Okay. Oh. Okay. He was ready for sex here. Yeah. 
Seven years of hadn't you done well? <laughs> they can touch like you. All right. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Look at the Lebanic wisdom here. What did I call it? Lebanic wisdom. Jacobic wisdom and Lebanic one. So you will see the senior colleague here. You know, thugs know their levels. Rascality has levels. This was a senior rascal here. In the evening that Laban, Lebanically, took Leah, his daughter, the older one, and brought her to Jacob. Ah. The man was clear. He said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. He was very unambiguous. He said, your younger, he didn't just say Rachel, he said, your younger daughter, Rachel. And Laban said, it's even better I give her to you. But inside him, the Ah. So when it was time to give Rachel out, he said, you sit down. This one has been here with me for some time. Now, this wisdom of the father, that's not always a good one. Parental wisdom is not the best. It's the human wisdom. He was, and you will see his reason here. He packaged Leah, brought her to Jacob, Jacob did not, because of his haste, look at the veil to see who was behind the veil. That's why when we are doing wedding, we say, remove the veil. We don't want to know. Uh, we don't want to hear that. It's another person that was. Let's see. You remove, let's see. And we ask the man, is it the same person to whom you proposed? If he says yes, is the notes where you found it then? If he says yes, then we can go ahead and join them. Can I have an amen? Jacob was ready for action. He rushed in. That's why unauthorized sex is always a danger to anybody. This was unauthorized. Go on, next one. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. Look at the wise man here. Next one, quickly. It came to pass in the morning that it was Leah. It was not even that night Jacob got to know. It was the following morning. I don't understand this. I need help here. No light there. If, I, don't know, I don't know what skin Rachel had, or Leah had, rather. It wasn't that, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been enough to light up the room. All right. If you see Israeli ladies, you will bow. Oh my God, like Middle East, generally. They are men and women are just stunning. Yeah, I don't know why God did that way. Even they are men. Are you a woman or a man? They are so good looking. It's the Lord's doing. Now, it was clear. He said to Laban, What is this you've done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? What's deception? With wisdom. What's lying? Whoever tells lies is a wise person. Lying is, a, is some kind of wisdom, but it's demonic. Deception is wisdom, it's demonic. Hear what Laban said. This is the wisdom of, of, our, of, our, of, of our custom. And that's where we struggle as Christians today. We say, our people say, our people say, our people say, what's, what's Urubu called in English? Alligator pepper? Yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, Atari. Pepper. You see, we, we can't count how many children alligator pepper has. We will not count your children. We will not be able to count your children. You will give birth till you are tired. Nobody says amen to that anymore. Because if you say amen to that one, we think we'll carry, no go feel carry. But that's your bad wisdom. You've seen alligator pepper to pray. They will bring schnapps. Sorry for mentioning that name. Hot drink. And they will bring dead rat to do naming ceremony. Dead rat was part of it. Sugar. Say, this boy's life will be sweet like sugar. Honey, mm, your life will be sweet. That's not prayer. That's not the Bible. Now, the dead rat as is smelling, they say because this species of mouse will always give birth without a certain operation 
So that's how you bring forth your babies, like this dead rat. That's how you reverse name their babies. And we get born again and bring that into the Bible. Are you listening to me? So we have really brought customs into God's word. And it has become our wisdom. Look at this here. Laban said, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. That's wisdom of the customs men. What wisdom are you demonstrating? See, that of your people, of your custom, that of your education, that of your marital status. What wisdom? Some will say, well, I'm not married yet. Let me just have a fling for now. When I'm ready for marriage, I will, settle. I will choose one of the men. Oh, she may never be able to choose again. They are custom. Gave him this wisdom such that he deceived a young man. And he was right in so nice. Think about it. The wisdom of God is the only wisdom you need. And it's, it's domiciled in God's word. God's wisdom is resident in his word. God's wisdom is the word of God. That is God's will. Remember, Isaiah 119 says, If you are willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. If you are willing to surrender to God's wisdom, if you will let God's word have the final say in your life, be it the written word or the proceeding word of God, God's word is all you need in life. God's word. Even the biggest of all troubles will surrender itself to the efficacy or the effectivity of God's word. God's word is God's wisdom. It's been tested. Psalm 12 verse 6. His words are pure words. As silver tried in the presence of the earth. Prefer seven times. The words of God are pure words. That's why there is wisdom. Look at this. Psalm 12 verse 6. And I close. Let's stand up and close. Look at this. The words of the Lord are pure words. That's why they constitute God's wisdom. Like silver tried in the furnace of the earth. Purified seven times. Verse 7. All right. Thank you. If his words are pure, tried, they've been proven like Americans would say, why don't we embrace that? That's why it is his wisdom. It will always have his way if we let it. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. In the name of Jesus, thank you for sending your word in a special way. Thank you for the hearts that have received your word. Satan, you can't touch this. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. This seed will grow into great trees that bring forth excellent fruits in our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. Good morning.